All right, so for this last part of the unit that we're now covering again, um, we're going to be graphing linear equations, all right? And our learning objectives for today, what I'm hoping you guys are able to do by the end of this video, um, is one, hopefully you're able to identify the slope and the y-intercept uh, in a linear equation. So when I give you a linear equation, you'd be able to identify what our slope is and what our y-intercept is. And then you will use those slopes and y-intercept to graph the linear equation. Right, so we did learn how to graph uh, before, which is plotting points, but now we're going to learn how to graph by looking at an equation and not just a table. All right, so let's first go ahead and talk about well, what is, uh, how does our linear equations appear, and we're only going to look at one specific one right now, um, and then we're going to identify, talk about how we can identify the slope, the y-intercept, and how we can use those to graph. All right, so the only equation we're going to talk about and learn right now is what's called our slope-intercept form, and that's this equation, y is equal to mx plus b. And we already talked about what this m represents, and we said that our slope can be denoted by the variable m. So our slope is equal to m. So when we see the m, this is our slope. All right, so that is really, really important. When we're looking at an equation where y is equal to, and we have an x also a part of it, um, whatever is being multiplied to our variable, or x, so whatever is being multiplied to our x is our slope. All right, and remember that is telling us our change in y over change in x. And we learned that we can literally just count up and down, left or right, depending on what our slope is. It's telling us how we're moving vertically versus how we're moving horizontally. But you have to understand that it's change in y over change in x, because as we talked about, the steepness is how quickly we're rising versus how quickly we're going horizontally. And since the ratio of a steepness is our vertical change over horizontal change, our slope, which talks about our steepness, is our change in y, because that's vertical, over our change in x because that's horizontal right now we know what an x and y is as well because that represents order pairs of x and y's and when we are dealing with slope intercept form the x and y's always need to be x and y's because we can plug in anything we want for x right x and y represent all the different order pairs that fall on that line all right so those ones will always be the variables x and y where m and b are going to be numbers that you'll see in the equation or next year you'll actually have to solve for Right, and then this B, well, what does this B represent? We didn't talk about any Bs. Well, B is our Y-intercept, and we did talk about that in class. Remember, our Y-intercept is where we cross our Y-axis. So wherever we cross this Y-axis, that would be our Y-intercept. So if I say our line crosses here, well, this red uh, graph that is true would have a B that is equal to eight because that is where it is crossing our Y axis. And it would be the order pair of zero comma eight because when we cross our Y axis, our X is zero because we didn't move anywhere left or right. So whenever we cross our Y axis, our Y intercept is what it's called. Uh, our X value is always equal to zero. And if I were to draw this green graph going like this, well, this green graph crosses our y-axis at negative 5, so our b will be equal to negative 5, or it will be the order pair of 0, negative 5. All right, so you just have to understand that our y-intercept is where we cross our y-axis, so where our graph crosses the y-axis at. All right, and those are the two important numbers that you need to know and be able to use in order to graph um, our equation in our slope intercept form all right so that m and that b are super important for you to be able to identify the m is always the number that's being multiplied to our x and the b is always the number that's being added or subtracted to our variable all right because as i showed you here it can be negative it doesn't just have to be positive all right but you need to be able to identify that the m or the number being multiplied to our x is our slope and that tells us how the steepness of our graph and is telling us a change in y over change in x and then the B is the number that's being added or subtracted, and that represents our y-intercept or where our, our graph crosses our y-axis. All right, so we're just going to do a couple examples with this, um, and then that will be uh, it for this video. All right, so we're going to go through a few different examples for this just to kind of show you maybe some how some of them may look, but we're going to stay with some of the more easier ones, meaning that our slopes are always just going to be positive for now. All right, but when we're given this equation, you're always going to be given them for now in our slope intercept form of y is equal to mx plus b. And remember, the two variables that we have to identify is our slope and our y intercept. So those are the two numbers that we need to be able to figure out. Well, our slope is always the number that's being multiplied to our variable x. So it's m times x. Well, I see here it's 3 times x. So my slope in this case will be equal to 3. 
The B is always a number that's being added or subtracted. Well, there's nothing being added or subtracted here. So since what number represents nothing? Well, that is zero. So it means that my B in this case is equal to zero. So even if nothing's being added or subtracted, there still is a B there. It's just going to be zero. All right. So now, if you remember in class, I was talking about if I want to get directions to your house, if I just called you up and said, hey, uh, give me directions to your house, you'd be like, well, well, how do I answer that? I don't know where you're at. And without knowing where you're at, I can't tell you how to get here. So when we're graphing, we need to first, so let's write this over here. We'll say first plot your y in your, whoops, uh, your y intercept. All right, that is our starting point. That's as if I called you and said, hey, I'm at um, Kowloon Tai Park. How do I get to your house from here? Without me giving you my location, you can't tell me how to get there. So the first thing we have to do is we need to plot our y-intercept. So remember, this is where we cross our y-axis and our x value is always equal to zero in our y-axis, in our y-intercept. So it's always gonna be zero comma, whatever our y-intercept is B, um, which in this case, it will be equal to zero comma zero. So we're passing through the origin here. All right now, that is our starting point. Our slope is like our directions. So now second, we use your slope to generate two more points. Right, so it's giving us directions. It's when I call you and say, hey, I'm at Kowloon Side Park. And you say, okay, you're going up three blocks and then go to the right two blocks or go north three blocks and uh, east two blocks. So you're giving me directions. This slope gives us directions. And remember, our slope is change in Y over change in X. So when I'm looking at this, we're going to read, if it's a whole number, write it as a fraction because every whole number can be written as a, as a fraction. So we know it's change in Y over change in X. So that means from that point, from that starting point of our Y intercept, our Y is changing three in a positive direction. So it's going up three, one, two, three. And my change in X is a positive one. So that means I'm going over one. There is my next point. So you see how once I have my starting point, I'm able to then generate another point using my slope. And I can do that again. One, two, three, because my change in Y is a positive three. So it means I'm moving up. And then my change in X is a positive one. So I'm moving to the right. Now, once you plot those points, you will use a straight edge and you will then draw um, your line going through those three points and make sure you're using a ruler so it's nice and straight unlike the one i have here and then make sure you're also putting these arrows at the end the arrows represent that this goes on to infinity and one of the things you have to understand about this is every single point on this graph satisfies that equation what i mean by that is here's the point that we generated of two and six so we generated a point of two six by using our slope to count well, if I plug it back into my original equation of y is equal to 3x, you'll see it satisfies that equation. Our y is 6, our x is 2. So we're asking, is 6 equal to 3 times 2? 6 does equal 6. So you see this point satisfies the equation. So every single point I pick on this will always satisfy the equation. If I pick this point here that fell through the corner of my boxes, so I know it's going to be whole numbers, it fell through the point of 3, 9. And we would see that 3, 9 does satisfy this equation as well, because 3 times 3 does give me 9. So every single point that falls on this graph, this line that we create, will satisfy that equation. So it means it's a solution of that equation as well. And that's something that you'll have to know in the future. For, uh, in the future. Uh, for right now, though, we just, just need to be able to just graph it. And then we'll talk about next year about what they mean in a little bit more detail. All right, so let's go ahead and do another problem. All right, so for this one, we have y is equal to 2 over 3x minus 4. So once again, we know that this is going to always be given to you for now in our slope-intercept form. So y is equal to mx plus b. And the two numbers we have to identify are our slope and our y-intercept. So I'm just going to go ahead and down here and say m is equal to and b is equal to. And now we're just going to go ahead and identify. Remember, the slope is always a number that's being multiplied to x. So in this case, it's being multiplied by that 2 over 3. So our slope is 2 thirds. All right, so it's 2 over 3. The entire 2 over 3 is our slope. And then the y-intercept is what's being added or subtracted. And since it says minus 4, my b is equal to minus 4. And remember, in our y-intercept, our x value is always going to be 0. And whatever that b is, is what our y-intercept is. 
So when we go to graph this, this is the first thing that we are going to graph, where you need to plot that point so I can have a starting point for my directions. So I know I cross my y-axis, because that's our y-intercept, at 0, negative 4. It gives me the point of 0, negative 4. And now we know it's change in y over change in x. So it is going to count up to 1, 2, and then to the right, 3. 1, 2, 3. There's my next point. Up, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and there is my next point. Once you plot those points, you will then use a straight edge, and you will draw a line going through your points and extend it beyond with the arrows. And that will be it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is plot our y-intercept, because once again, I can't call you and say, hey, give me directions without you knowing where I'm at. And B, the y-intercept re represents a point, whereas a slope is just telling us how we're changing. So if we don't know where to start from, I can pick any point and change up to over three, but it doesn't necessarily mean it falls on this line that we have here. So that's why we have to first plot our y-intercept because it gives us a starting point, and then we go ahead and plot our slope. All right, that is it for this video, and we're going to do this in class more.